Okay folks, in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to use image matrix to analyze a protein DNA image um, doing single molecule analysis. So here I have um, image processor open. So first I have to um, process the image first and I have a few demos here and uh, the, pro the demo that we are looking at today is the protein DNA complex. So we can click this demo and uh, it will open that demo and then you see this image is in raw state. It's not processed and then you can see there's a spike in the middle here so which then it makes everywhere else dim and hard to see. So the first thing I would do is to remove that spike. Um, if you want to see elsewhere clearly, you can basically adjust the scale and offset. For example, you can just just put it just um just put your mouse cursor over here and just scroll your mouse. If you if your mouse has a middle button, if you have use a touchpad, you can use the scroll the two finger scroll. So which you, then you can adjust its values. So here you can see um then you can see the the background more clearly but if you do auto scaling then you see this spike just shadows everything else because it's too high so the first thing we need to do is to remove that spike we use um, in AFM we usually use um, a an accent filter which is this button uh, you can also access this tool in the modify tab and there's this right the thing the tool is here so let's just use the one here so you click this and uh, you can click the custom field I already made a profile called the remove thin line which essentially remove that spike this one is a medium filter which you can configure that um, you can see what the parameter for this one is so it's essentially a medium filter so I'm just going to click this one. We'll, we'll, I'll make I'll make another video this I mean covering the how the how these filters work. So right now I'm just click this remove thin line, and you see that spike is removed, and now we can see the image more clearly, and it's still needs a secondary fixing which is to flatten the image you see it's not even so we can do um, so right now I just uh, yeah you do this first so you see this one it's um, I just I forgot to uncheck this auto filter and get the mask I felt so right now you see the mask and you see it's, it's high in the middle so it's not flat Right, the image is not flat, so so we need to normalize the surface. We usually use a um, so to normalize these. Um, if you mask them, it essentially excludes those areas. So that's not what we want because we want to fix the area, right? This in the middle, right? So we don't want to do that. So we uncheck mask. So we need to apply the correction to all the image so then we can pick the flatten function which is here we can select flatten order flatten direction the flatten uh, action you can also access the function here in the flatten so when you click that and it lets you choose what which direction you want to flat the image which order you want to do it's basically a polynomial fixing so uh, it's a line-wise fixing that fix each line. So right now, the I mean, I'll have another video talk about that um, in the future. So if there's some technical details for that. So, but right now we're just going to use the normal one. So it's just the x direction, and then we use uh, a secondary order for this image that works well. So click the flatten. You see that it removes the unevenness of the image. Then we click the mask again, 
and uh, we can check whether it's flat or not. We can still use the scroll bar, I mean use the mouse wheel or use the scrolling act, the two finger scroll in your touchpad that works to adjust to fine tune the um the, the mask level and uh, this threshold level basically. So you can see that when, when we lower the threshold you can see it's not still not flat enough, right? It's, it's a bit lower in, in this uh, vertical area, right? And it's higher than there. So we can apply a Y direction flat line in this case. Um, because the Y, I mean, it's not even, right? So um, because the X direction is not even, it's higher here, lower there. So we have to apply a Y direction flat line and just bring every Y level to the same, I mean, normalize the Y value to zero. So in this case, we, what we can do is we can do a mask flattening. So we don't want to, apply, you know, we don't want to use the, the DNA and the protein, right? Um, we don't want to include. I mean, we don't want to include them into the um, the the correction of the background, right? So we want to exclude those their outliers. So they don't want to use them to calculate the background. So we have to use a mask flattening. So basically, we mask the DNA and the protein, and then we choose Y and then choose the first order and that works well. So then we click flattening. So now you can see that, um, yeah, it's flattened. So let's see. Yeah, I just want to make sure that. See, it's the surface everywhere is 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 flat, right? It's, it's the the dot, the noise in the background is even and distributed. And that's what we call it's normalized. So, um, so now we have the image flattened. Um, then what we can do is we can filter these noise because they are not we're not interested in them, right? So we could click out of filter which basically applies a, a, an area filter. And right now I'm a mask, I already applied a colorful mask option. So if you, so there are a few options the mask appearance. You can, for example, uncheck colorful mask. It will basically the singular red color. And if you check transparency, right, the color will be, the mask will be transparent so you can see through it, right? So right now I don't, we don't need transparency. We can use a colorful mask, which is very useful for the purpose of um, making sure the DNA are well connected. For example, if I just do, yeah, um, yeah. So right now you can see. I mean, I, I need to. So yeah, you can also change the filter, right? So um, because right now we only apply what what the kind of filter we apply here, right? Auto filter. So the filter you can adjust them here is this place where we apply we adjust the filter parameters so, so you can see that the parameter for we, we apply an area parameter this is minimum this is a maximum value in these two boxes so um, let's see what happens if we make it lower yeah I think you make it much lower actually Yeah, so you see that, and uh, if you when you lower the area filter, the other things begin to pop in. So like this, right? So you can see a lot of these, the proteins will be included, right? Because they have smaller areas. So, um, so that's what I'm talking about. So like this colorful mass is useful to connect the DNA. For example, if you adjust. The threshold are a little bit different. See the DNA here is they have different colors, right? That means they do not connect to each other, right? And uh, if you just use a singular color, then it wouldn't be able to tell them apart. So if you apply the colorful mask, then if the masks are separated, then they will have different colors. So that's a use for us. Scenario, so we uh, that's why I want to use the colorful mask. Um, and by the way, you can just scroll the mouse wheel in the image to zoom in and zoom out. And the same thing with the touchpad, right? Just scrolling um, motion. So, 
So right now I'm just want to connect the DNA. So I would lower the, the threshold, right? Right now it's a singular color. So then I can apply my area filter to get rid of those proteins, right? So I, I mean, I already demonstrate that. So one th way you can do is you can plot its histogram, right? And then you can basically see these will be the DNA, this will be the proteins. You can basically pick an area in the middle. So pick the area mean, then that would remove the actual proteins. The other thing you can do with the filter is you can see the DNA here. Let me just do something uh, quick and just fix scale. Um, so you can see that not all DNA have proteins. So only this one has like a protein that these are just free DNA. So what we can do, I mean, can we do anything more to just single that one out, right? We don't need, for example, if we do not need to analyze the free DNA, can we actually filter them out? And you can actually do that by applying the filter. So right now we have an area filter, right? Which basically filter out the proteins. But we can also add another filter. So right now the area is selected. You can add a maximum intensity filter, right? Because the protein, the DNA with the protein will be taller than right the free DNA. So we can apply a maximum area. I mean, a maximum intensity filter. So right now, click this. We plot the distribution. Essentially, there's a five. There are five, right? Particles. So we have a five particle distribution. So we know that this this column, right, would be the one that has a protein on top. This like above two nanometers. So we can basically click here and pick the current spots, the maximum intensity. Now you can see only the one that has the protein is selected. The other ones are filtered out, right? So for the purpose for this one, let's not do that. Let's just analyze all the the protein. I mean, all the DNA, all the DNA molecules, including the free ones. Just uncheck that. Um, so next we can just do analyze these things. So what you do is you do a particle analysis. You just click analyze which is in the analyze tab so when you've done that right so you have five particles they are labeled one two three four and five now you can either click the results right we want you to see the results you can either do a batch analysis which is basically particle analysis in our afm program um which basically analyze the, the basic metrics like the the, the length and uh, the area, the volume, the intensity, what the shape parameter. So um, these are not very useful for single molecule analysis because the protein complex is you know complex um, complicated. Um, we uh, we usually use I mean in my study I use just I have to analyze them like I mean individually not in by in bark so I can't use that so because I want to analyze the position of the protein on the DNA. So there's some kind of detailed me measurement that needs to be done mostly, you know, sometimes by hand. So it's it's not a complete automatic process. So you can use the batch analysis. So what we do, we do, we click the individual analysis, which is the region inspector. You can also click here, the region inspector. So it will automatically bring up um, it will bring up the region inspector module, which essentially is zoning in each molecule one by one. And you can take measurements on each individual one. And you can record the measurements in your um, building table. So right now the region inspector is open. And uh, the first thing you see is the um the workspace where right, with the molecule which is the particle number one if you want to know which particle is it in the same in the I mean the main image you can just click the particle and that will highlight that particle right that's that we know it's the uh the particle one right so if you go back to part go to particle two just click this arrow you can also select them right so particle two uh, particle four go to the particle four 
right? And then you know that's that particle. So so that there's a connection between the region inspector and the main image, right? So so right now let's start from the read the first one. Um, so this is a protein DNA complex. It has two proteins on this um, DNA molecule. So because we have done the heavy lifting of like masking the DNA and the, so this tells you that this is the fiber of the DNA which tells you how well it's been traced automatically this is the automatic tracing result and you can see this already do, do a pretty good job right it traces DNA pretty well compared to right to that so um but it's not doing a great job for example for this one which like this place right it's um it, it traces down to somewhere not it should go up there but it goes down so that's not a great result so that needs to be fixed and for example for the, um let's see yeah for this for this result it's not good right so it, it should the DNA clearly is not traced. It goes so that needs to be fixed as well. So that's why the bark analysis, right? This is basically the the result of bark analysis, but they are not very good, right? They do not do a good job in DNA tracing. That's why we need to fix them individually. That's where the region inspector comes in. So we go to region inspector, right? So this first one is it's easy, right? It's already traced well. So you click the DNA. You see, it's already traced well. If you want to see like how it's done, actually, you can just mask that. Just click mask, and you can see this DNA is masked, right? And I just do that again. So it's color different, right? So it's kind of transparent color right now, but you can uncheck the transparency, so you can see the DNA is already masked in continuity. That's why it's it's just easy to traced and that's 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 how the computer recognized the DNA so just in case you don't know why it's rec can't identify the DNA that's how it works so it's to use a mask right as a high space threshold once it's masked then if the mask is continuous then you can click on the mask then it will figure out the fiber of the DNA so usually we just don't want the mask it's, it's it just hinders uh, our ability to see the DNA well, so we just uncheck the mask and just click the DNA. So now we have that, right? So we have like two proteins on the DNA. So and that represent that's represented by the two peaks here, and um, and so we want them to know the location of the protein on the DNA, for example, right? So that's in my study that's that's the quantity that I analyze so the way to do this is I can use right click this um, this graph right this is just a section graph of the DNA fiber so and the direction of the graph right so where it starts where it ends it starts from the here which labels one that's the first anchor point and then it ends at the, here the second anchor point so which means the one that place is at zero here and the two that point is at here right at the end of this section this profile and that's why we know this peak right represents this protein the first protein right that's closest to the first anchor and this peak represents the second the protein so if we use this function right click this graph right if you can just if you click record position you just randomly record position anywhere right so for example if you record position here then the rec it just might just place a, a mark on in this place right and also place a mark on, on this on where it is in the real image so that is right the function of just record position you just record the position at where your mouse click is right so that's where it placed a you know a mark there and there right so that's what that's 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 just done right so i mean 
apparently we can do this automatically to you know to identify these two the location of these two picks. So what we do, um, let's clear them the thing first. Clear table first. So what we do is this. Um, so um, let's see. Yeah. So what we do is we can click and record position at that designated location, which what is designated location, right? So we can figure that out in options. And right now it's configured as the top of the peak, right? So that's the designated location. If you click options, you can see what's the designated location. So that's the maximum height that's configured right now. So so if you want, if you if there's just one protein, right? If we just need to identify this this the first protein, then we can just click designated location. So that place a mark on the peak, and also it like it place a mark on the protein, right? And what it records is record its position on the um, the DNA. Um, which is basically the position at this point, right? Which is um, 0.2, right? 200 nanometer, basically. So that's the position, which is basically the position to its starting point, right? The, the position, this, 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 the distance of this point to the, the first angle point, the starting point. So, which is also the short arm lens, right? With the the position of, of our protein to its nearest um, uh, end, basically. So, so that's that. And if we want, just if we just have one protein, that we usually just use the record position at designated location. But right now we have two proteins, so that's well not what we do, right? So let's do this again, right? So that's 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 just a demo. So and if we want to do this like um, record two of them. Let's do this again, okay? So what we use is record position of a section, which basically once you click this, right, it, it has a, a like this kind of thing. So it has a cross bow um, cursor. So there's a horizontal bar. And you just place the bar like beneath the two peaks, then you automatically mark the two peaks. So right now my position, right, my point, my, the horizontal position of my cursor, right, is, is, is lower than the height of the two peaks, right? So I click, I left click, then you automatically mark the two protein peaks, right? If I place somewhere here, which is only above one, Maybe which is only which is above one of the peak but below another right so that will only mark the first one not the secondary one but right now we need to mark two of these so we just place this below the two picks and then we click and then it will mark the two um, the proteins right in one shot and then when we're done satisfied right then we can just middle click to finish um, the middle click is right, if you have a mouse button, you have a middle click. But if you use a touchpad, there's no middle click. What you can do is you can shift um, left click right at the same time. So press shift on the keyboard and left click at the same time, and that would finish. So right now we have like we mark the two proteins on the DNA, and uh, the color of the mark is the same. So you can see the color here is brown, and here is green, which represent the same color of the same cross, right? The mark on the DNA, the same color with the same cross. So, and the first one in the row, in the, the first row in the table, right? It's the first protein. So that's the parameters of the first protein, which is 200 nanometer, right? From the starting point, and the second row is the second represent the second protein. This is like seven hundred nanometer. That's right here, right? The first one is two hundred nanometer. So, and it also it marks the height of the protein, right? The maximum height, the, the height of the peak, right? It's three nanometer and two nanometer. So, and uh, also the short arm position, the total length of the DNA, which is one micron. 
and uh, yeah, the fraction of the position, which is the position divided by the total length, that is 20%, this is 68%. So this is used for information to identify whether the protein is at a specific place on the DNA, such as like a mismatch, the site, right? So if you have specific site, binding site on DNA, right, then this information is crucial to identify whether the protein is specifically bind to the DNA at the location or not, right? But it's like sequence dependent or lesion dependent, right? Whether it has mismatches on DNA, right, or breaks on the DNA. So it's whether there's a like specific binding sites Right? Is there anything different versus the non-specific binding site? So these are the lo this location information is important, and this kind of analysis, right? You cannot do them in bulk, right? Because they involve so many parts. Um, so after we finished analyzing the um, position of these two proteins, then we can analyze the um the other matrix of the protein right there are two protein here so we want to analyze it's like for example how the volume basically its size right how so it can give you information like how many proteins are there is it one is it two so we need to know the information of the size um so to do that we can um use so if you just click the DNA, right, so it, it gives you the matrix, right? Right now, all these area, like volume and stuff, right? So this is the whole DNA, so it's not the individual protein. So we want to localize our measurements, right? This matrix, we want to localize, we want to restrict them to the proteins only, not the DNA. So if you click just the DNA, right, just the protein here, it, it won't right you won't automatically select the protein so it's so you have to manually basically crop the protein so we use a region of interest tool which is in the analyze tab so so there's a draw region of interest right and uh, right i don't usually do this I mean, it's hard to add, to access if you have to click back and forth multiple times. So I will usually just add them to a, uh, a shortcut, a mini toolbar. So I like to do that. So add to mini toolbar, add that. Um, it's, the mini toolbar is usually hidden. Um, if you to show the mini toolbar, I just click this miscellaneous and check this box, mini toolbar. And then you can, whenever you right click the mouse button, then this shows a the tool here, right? So that's where, so you can access them more easily. It's like a quick access tool. So we, I need, I need the three tool, right? Re, I mean, draw a region of interest and draw a reverse a region of interest, and then remove our region of interest, right? I may also need to, add, to do the angle stuff as well. To measure the protein band angle, so we just act, just add this to the quick access to the mini toolbar. Um, okay, that's that. So um, yeah, I may want to just yeah, that's fine for now. Yeah, so let's go back to the main tab. So right now, I want to draw a region of interest. So what I do is I right click, right, it pop up. The mini toolbar, then I can click your ROI, your region of interest. So click that, and then you see the mouse cursor changes to a cross, and then you can just draw a, a circle that crops the protein, right? And then just click that. And then you know it, you select only the protein, right? So that's just the fiber of the protein. So you can ignore that. It does not have any meaning. So if you want to see the action, what it does, so you can basically um, check the mask. So you see the, the protein, right? It's masked in that area. So let's just do this again. Just remove all mini this. 
So right now you see the DNA is whole DNA is math. That that's why it's measuring the the matrix of the whole DNA. So you want just the protein, right? So we can we can just do a draw region of interest and then just draw that, and right? just to illustrate my point. Then check the mask again. See, it, it only cuts off the portion of the DNA, right? That has the protein in it, and uh, the matrix. It only measures the things that's inside that mask. So it's inside this region of interest, but also it's inside of that mask that's colored by the, the brown color, right? So that's how it works. So right now we have the, the matrix of the protein. And uh, I usually do is, because it's the first protein, then we know it's in row number one, right? So what I do is I just right click the table and say record all parameters. So then it puts all the parameters in the first row, right? That represents. So what that means in the first row, right? It means the first protein, right? Its location of DNA, and also it's all its parameters, particle matrix, its volume, its area, its height, right? Everything, its you know, shape parameters, right? Circularity, diameter, right? Parameter, major axis, right? So all this stuff. So, um. We can do the same thing with the secondary protein. So, in this case, I'm just go back to to here, right? And uh, yeah, I can zoom in and zoom out of the image by using the scroll wheel, as I mentioned earlier. Just right click this and click draw region of interest. You know, all you need to do is just cut off the DNA arms that's connecting to the protein. You don't need to do a great job. So, because the mask. We'll make sure it doesn't really mess the background. Right? So only the protein part is counted. So now this is a secondary one. Just click record all parameters. But before you do that, you need to select the second row first. Just click any cell in the secondary row, and then you right click the, the metric table, and then click record all parameters. So that's how it works. And um, yeah, you can also manually edit something if you want. So that's doable so right now we have that and uh, I have the auto save option to save the re records which is basically this table right uh, the snapshots of my, my measurements so basically it take a snapshot of this image and it also save the crop in the main image so let's see what they do and uh, so right now I'm done with this analysis right so what I do is I click the next particle by default, these measurements they are not recorded right in a file because we want, we want to save our analysis. We don't want to make our effort in vain. So to do that, we usually right click and say record current measurements, which basically um, so make sure that this this particle is this this table is recorded right. Sometimes you have multiple particles. Not just one DNA, but two DNA, for example, in the same area, the same image. In that case, we have to re do this twice, right? Record current measurements. We do it on one. So this table is basically on one DNA only. There are two proteins, but it's just on a single DNA, right? If we want to record another DNA, we cannot record it in the same table. We have to start a new table. So in that case, we just have to do this. Click new blank measurements, right? So the record of this first one, the record current measurement, right click there, right? That records the current table of the, cur of the current DNA, right? That you are measuring. Then we want to go to the next DNA, just click new blank measurement, right? Finish the same, do the same measurement. Then we just click, click again, record a current measurement. That records two, right? So right now it's basically the selection here. Um, right, for example, let's just see how it works, right? Say if I say record current measurements, now the selection here just has like one, right? The first one is the empty one. This is the I call it dashboard, the blank measurements, which is not recorded. But once you record and which one, once you click record current measurement, we'll place like a, a label. For example, one here. That means the part that the, 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 the particle one, right? The DNA number one. So this is the DNA one. And then it pop up the measurements for DNA number one. So that's that. And if you forgot to Place click record parameter. You don't need to worry. So when you go to the secondary 
particle, it automatically reminds the record. And so that's not anything you need to worry. So when now we can just click the secondary one, go to particle number one, number two. And yeah, the program automatic if, if you have not choose a file to save, the program will prompt you to save to a file. You can choose Excel format, right? Or text format. Choose Excel format. So that's that. Um, just click save. Just choose a place and save it. The program will automatically remember the location of the files it's saving to. So uh, the next time you save, an, I mean, you record another particle, you don't have to see this dialog box again. So it will save to the same file. Just click save. So it's, it's saving. It's saving three things. First, the records, the table. Then it saves the snapshot, what measurements you just did, and then the snap it saves the crop. Let's see what they are. The first, let's see the table. Now we are on the particle number two, right? So this is a different particle. Let's see what's the what's what we saved just now. So the first one is the records. Um, that's the file that we have. I think it's in the the desktop. So it's this Excel file. Let's just open the Excel file, see what it looks like. So that's the file. So it has, it's just a table that we just saw, right? So there are two rows. The first row is the particle number one, right? The second row is the, you know, protein number one. The second row is protein number two. So we have its metric, the protein. We have its location in the DNA. It's already ordered in alphabetic order of these metrics. So we want to know, for example, the location, we go back, go to the position, the parameter position, which is here, right? So, um, so you see that it's 200 nanometer and 700 nanometer. That's the two position, right, of the protein on the DNA. So that's how we know. And then the record column says it's the DNA one, right? We only have one DNA in that image, so that's the DNA one. And um, the it also tells you the image file. What what's the image we're analyzing? Which is the image file, the information there. So that's that's these are just important crucial information for you to know, like how, what kind of I mean, what's the protein that you have just analyzed. So you can. Tr trace back to like from this table you can basically trace back to what you analyzed but that's not enough right we need to know like what exactly what's what like, what's the for example let's say we need to know that we have we have to take that snapshot right that's the important thing we have to have in order to trace back to our original particle so that's where the snapshot is so in the same folder the desktop that we just saved right in addition to this Excel file, we also have this file, which is says the protein, this is the file name of that image, right? 170, and then this crop, right? PNG, that's the snapshot file. When you open this, you see that, um, let's put this in perspective. So you said that this original image, the, you know, the snapshot that we just have, the two protein that's cropped, and then that, and then this, right, the peak. So these are the snapshots. So that's why we know that's the DNA number one, right? That's that's the number one. That's why um, the particle number one, right? So that's what it is. So that's just the number one. That's the one here, right? So um, or maybe record number one. I forgot that. Um, yeah, and the record number one. So yeah, it's also particle number one too, because that's particle number one, right? So that's particle. Number, that's that's what it meant. The particle one means the particle of this. Particle one and the record one is the record one of this number of one. So that's that's the information that we use to trace back to the original image. Um yeah, and then I think there is a crop. 
and I don't think it has saved the crops yet. This should have a box that's masking this thing, but it has not shown up yet. So I don't know what's wrong right now. So, um, well, yeah, maybe it's a bug that I need to fix, but what happened, what should happen is there should be a box surrounding this particle. So like when the next time you open the, uh, you can save basically save these the workspace right there's a workspace file so the next time you open the workspace file you should have you should see this um the the analyzed molecules um enclosed in a box basically but right now the box is not shown um maybe it's some kind of bug but okay that's that's a minor one so and then so what we now have is particle number two so we can basically do the same thing right and right now it, you can the, the DNA is not traced particularly well you can adjust the um, the particle I'm sorry let me take some water first So here you can adjust the ends of the DNA to make it trace better. So look at the ends, right? It's not particularly. So what you can do, you can just drag the ends of the, of the of this. So you when you hover your mouse over the anchor point, you see the the cross becomes red, right? So that means you are you can select and the drag basically left click that cross and drag it in that you can change its location right so you just want to move it to the correct ends of the dna like that yeah and then this one we do the same thing so something like this that will solve the problem right and what's interesting here is you can also see there's a some kind of helping like you know super card structure here so the DNA is not the trace is not you know in route to that part so we might want to trace that part as well so we can see them better in the original image so let's just look at this this is particle number two so we can just crop that and see zoom so you see there's like a little bit of DNA um detour to like outwards a little bit right there's a helping structure there so the one thing we can do right but it's not traced well in the region inspector what we can do is we can add an angle point in the middle right so to do that right so remember this thing is already right masked whole thing is mass so basically we can put the thing like anywhere else so um, yeah but once you do that I have to redo this again the ends so yeah so what you can do is you can just double click that place you don't have to be precise just double click that place it adds a like another anchor point in the middle so just double click that so now you see that DNA adds another anchor point number two and that shows up the color array also shows up in the profile as well. So what it means is the DNA traces from one to two, right? The green part is from two to three, right? The orange part. If you want to, so right now we what we see is the whole length of the DNA. If you want just want to see the first part, right? The green part, you can just click the green part. Just move your mouse up to here, and once the line becomes bold. Then you can just click that and right, the thickens, right? And then it only shows the the section, right? The profile of the green section. And if you click the orange section, it shows you right, the length of the orange section, which is 400 nanometer, 440 nanometer. And the green part is right, 449 nanometer. So now if you click this green part again, now it shows the full right, length of the 
of the DNA. So that's a interesting thing. Um, you can also do something different, right? For example, so right now we have the full length of DNA. So now we know it's like 893 nanometer. So you can also do something interesting thing. For example, you can just analyze a section of the DNA. For example, I just want to analyze like from here to here, for example. What you can do, right, if you just click the DNA, it trace the DNA automatically, but we, sometimes we don't want to do that. We just want to do a manual tracing, right? So in that case, you can just double click anywhere in the DNA it will start right there, right? The first one, the first anchor point. Then you can just double click again, then trace to that, right? This is called a manual tracing. So in this case, for example, we can do it to manage it. Like we can start from the beginning, right? Double click, then click this secondary one, this place, and then click the third one, right? Now that's just three clicks, right? That's the, the manual tracing, right? So there's two ways of doing this, right? One is automatic tracing, right? Automatic tracing sometimes it does a great job, right? You don't have to do anything, but in this case, you have to adjust the ends, right? You also have to add angle points, so it's not that easy, right? Sometimes manual tracing is much easier. In this case, you can just click the first one, click the second point, then click the third point, right? That, you know, you can argue which one is easier, but sometimes the manual tracing can be a little bit easier. And the other and and let's not forget that the mechanism of the tracing is all based on the mask right if, if you the mask is not connected then it won't trace right for example you can trace from here to there and that would never work right so that would never work so if that's the foundation of the that's a secret of how the DNA traces so that's something we need to keep in mind um, yeah so, and the if all, I mean even the manual tracing, it's it's still you utilize the mass. It's 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 a calculate the fiber, the skeleton of the the mass to do the you know to do the tracing. Even if that doesn't work, right? Sometimes maybe the image is too messy, right? The, the particles are too messy. You can use like a freehand section tool, which basically draw you can basically draw it you know by hand. Basically, it will trace the this section by hand. So that's that's always an option. I just draw a free hand. That's the that's the most you know. Um, let's say a stupid one. Not not so you know efficient. But that's that's that option is there if if you have some very complicated particle. Um, so that's this molecule. So we're not analyzing this one. Um, but you can. Analyze then. So for example, just I mean, I just want to record the the length of the DNA. Just you know, record. Um, yeah, I don't I don't need the location of anything. So just record any position. That's just I just need the total length of the DNA, and then that's all I need. Um, yeah, I don't. There's no protein on the DNA, so I don't need this. Um, this you know this information so I just need that and then once I'm satisfied with this right then I just can click next particle remember originally I tell I told you that I need to record right otherwise it won't record right but as long as you have information on the table here the program will automatically remind you to record them so you don't have to worry about that all you need to do is to click the next particle then the program will say the current records table, right? Which which means this table is empty. I mean, it's not empty. So, do you want to save the records or not? Right? If you want to save the results, which is the length of the DNA, right? That's that's the one we need. We just can save that. So click yes, and automatically just mask mark number one here, and uh, right, and saves it. Um. Yeah, then we go back to number three. So I think there's an error in the background. So it does not let me continue to the third one. That's that's a bug I need to fix. But I think that you get the idea. So um, let's see. Yeah, 
the crop is not working that I need to fix. And um, and also like the autosave, maybe I need to fix that as well. So let's go back to the desktop. I think, uh, yeah, so that's that. I think that you got the most of these. So once, I mean, the bugs are fixed, I think you should just be able to just click next particle and it records it. And then what you would have is you have the table that's been updated, right? To include all the information and you have the number of snapshots, not just one snapshot, but you have snapshot for every particle that you analyze. And uh, you should also have a rectangular box for the particles that you have determined to save. So that's the crops, right? It's auto save the crop. That's the crop, that rectangular box. Right now, because there's a bug, it's not showing up yet. So that's how we do the, uh, um, the particle, I mean, the single monica analysis for protein DNA monica complex. And um, this is just one image, right? You can do, you can analyze multiple images, right? And uh, and then you can do the single monica analysis all in the same module, which is the region inspector, right? So this has the, once you finish analyze a single image, it will, if you have more images here, then click the next <coughs> image, right? And then it will go, you just repeat this process. All right. Well, that's for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.